So hi everyone and welcome to this uh, fifth and last webinar uh, of our online course on democracy and adult education uh, named Together for Change. Uh, it is part of the Future Lab A project. Uh, before starting, I just want to uh, remember you that this uh, webinar is being recorded uh, and um, that uh, it will be uh, possible to use the chat during uh, the whole webinar uh, to comment, uh, to share some ideas, some opinions, as you want. You also have the Q&A um, button to, um, to ask some questions during the presentations of our speakers, of our guests. Um, so feel free to, to ask whatever you want. Uh, and at the end, we will have uh, a moment to answer those questions. Um, and before uh, giving the floor to our first speaker and our moderator today, uh, Carlos, um, I would like to to ask you to, to, to propose you a little activity. As you know, this webinar um, has, um, has as a title a question, and the question is where change-oriented adult education could take place. And I would like you to um, answer this, this question in the chat. Where do you think that the, um, the change-oriented adult ed education can take place? Where? So please, Give me just one example, uh, if you if you uh, if you can. Uh, so use the chat to um, to to answer this question, and then okay. So uh, Thomas says uh, outside our institution institution sorry build buildings like in a park for instance. Okay. More more answers. Where can we? Um, when uh, does the uh, or where can change oriented adult education take place? Okay, no more answers. In a cafe, Sari says, in a cafe, in a petrol station, in a community center. Yeah, okay. Great. In a library, says uh, Irena. Yeah, good. Okay, you can still uh, put your answers on the chat. So now I, uh, I will give the floor to uh, Carlos. Carlos, I will let you uh, introduce yourself. I think it's the best way um, to start. Um, and then you can start your, uh, your presentation. Um, and thank you in advance. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Francisca. For me, it's a great, great pleasure to, to share again with the old people of uh, the European Association of Adult Education and to be part of this um, uh, this training, uh, this webinar, and uh, just to introduce myself, uh, uh, I'm the I'm the coordinator of a social innovation agency. Its name is Caixa de Mitos. We work in a lot of territories about local uh, developments and uh, about uh, uh, learning uh, in, um, in a lot of places. And uh, I have uh, a function too with uh, EPAL. I am, uh, I am the ambassador, the coordinator of uh, non-formal and informal education in Portugal. So I'm participating in uh, networks and at uh, this level, um, trying to, to give more and more uh, action to non-formal and informal education in our country at, and at European level. And uh, um, two more references about uh, sustainable development. I am Kaisha Dimitri's member of Ecolis. Ecolis, it's a, a very, very interesting uh, network about uh, uh, climate change and uh, about sustainable development. And uh, at the end, we are a yeah. member of a collective, uh, a very French collective called Kelvoa. Uh, it's about uh, 
counseling, about to, to accompaniment, uh, how to be with people in their uh, pathways, uh, in uh, inclusion, uh, social inclusion uh, processes. So uh, my, uh, my introduction is about, uh, is about this concept of uh, um, sharing uh, local places to, um, to have learning processes. That means what we can do about uh, learning, uh, not uh, only in uh, specific and specialized uh, places for that. That means that we, we need to, um, to think about uh, this, uh, uh, this idea of uh, learning as a very, very open process. And um, at the same time, to, to think about uh, training as a tool and not uh, as a goal. That means uh, uh, we need to uh, think about uh, our participation, not only in uh, education, not only in training, but at local level in uh, local development, in community uh, development. And, um, uh, the first concept that I have shared in the past with uh, some people uh, in this, uh, this training action, it's about learning territories. That means uh, uh, our contribution as educators, as um, members of uh, teams in learning actions uh, must be uh, folk as uh, how can I contribute uh, to uh, these uh, territories, these learning territories as member of this community. And uh, um, it's not only about individual learning, it's about how we get more uh, collective uh, competencies, how we get uh, uh, more uh, capacity at local level to, uh, to face all the challenges of development. And uh, um, this topic about uh, sustainable development, it's really uh, something that can uh, be inspirator of actions uh, uh, in learning actions. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, about economics, it's about social, it's about cultural, it's about uh, um, all the topics uh, 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 and the uh, environment too. Uh, but it's about uh, governance at the same time. That means uh, sustainable uh, development uh, needs uh, to be fought as a global and an integrated concept. And at the same time, our challenge is how we, can we introduce learning uh, actions, learning process in that way. Uh, and um, uh, um, it's, uh, 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 it's an approach that, that means uh, that we are not only in specialized spaces, but everywhere in the territory where something happens about uh, local development, how we can introduce learning and ed education actions. Um, and uh, for this uh, approach, we need to have a vision of our function. In the past, uh, um, most part of our idea, it's about uh, to be an educator, to be someone who um, is with people in a uh, learning process, but uh, we need more and more to, uh, to, to take our function as facilitators uh, and uh, to be more and more uh, someone who, 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 who creates bridges uh, between process, between networks, between people, between communities. And in um, this vision, this, act, this approach about learning process me means that we are more and more social artists and less and less uh, trainers, uh, teachers, uh, and something like that. Um, it's our, our, uh, our vision of the world uh, uh, that we uh, need to mobilize in our, in our professional action. Uh, we can't be uh, only a teacher or a trainer. We need to be a citizen, to be someone who contributes to the local uh, and global development. And for that, uh, our 
key word or key approach in, in terms of methodology. It's uh, doing with and not doing for. Uh, doing with, uh, it's uh, 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 really uh, 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 very, very, very strong uh, challenge for everyone. How can I do for doing with, with, an, with negotiation, um, with, uh, um, uh, with terms of uh, um, creating, uh, creating uh, something with the others and uh, uh, bringing the concept of co-construction. Co-construction uh, needs to be our uh, first goal in that kind of approach of education and training. And uh, for that, uh, it's very, very important to, uh, to have the idea that uh, diversity is a potential. Diversity, it's not, uh, it's not a barrier, it's not a difficulty. Diversity, it's really something that can uh, create the basis of uh, actions at uh, this level uh, with the real, real potential. Well, let me introduce two, two uh, ideas about that. Uh, the first one, it's uh, about uh, third places, uh, what the French call tiers lieu. That means some places where uh, are combined in a very, very, very uh, strong way uh, um, uh, activities with uh, connect with work, connect with uh, uh, with uh, um, um, connect, connect with the culture, connect with. Uh, 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 professional act uh, activities uh, with leisure, with uh, commerce. Uh, that means that there are a, a kind of meeting points uh, with a lot of projects, with a lot of, of, of activities that are um, uh, in action uh, at local level uh, for the needs of the community. And uh, the challenge here, it's the, it's the same. It's uh, how we can combine all these uh, activities that really they have autonomy. The, uh, uh, everyone who comes who, who has its own activity in this place, but at the same time um, can be uh, autonomous, autonomous and at the same time be in the networks. And uh, um, uh, these, uh, these places uh, combining uh, work, uh, learning, uh, culture, leisure, all, all the activities at local level, are really important for the social link um, and uh, uh, creates communities, creates uh, local and specific communities. And in, in, um, uh, our challenge is how to learn, uh, uh, how to give more and more possibilities to, to, to learn in that, in that kind of places. And, uh, uh, and for us, uh, it, it, um, the challenge is to uh, how to organize the appropriation process. That means all the experiences are not connected with learning, connect with uh, um, the possibility to develop some competences. So we need to organize the, 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 the appropriation process, uh, how to give to the experiences something connected with knowledge, uh, so something connected with uh, um, personal and development and new competencies. And it's a, a really a big, a very, very strong challenge to, to, to be part of this because generally um, the, 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 the action of transmission, the lack of, of uh, learning the basis of transmission doesn't uh, require that kind of competencies in facilitating process. Um, so, uh, um, um, Taking part of this, uh, this uh, uh, that kind of uh, um, spaces. Uh, uh, just a, a final word about the communitarian school of uh, San Miguel, uh, very close of uh, Évora in the in the south of Portugal. Uh, this school, um, it's a very very inter interesting school because it's about uh, it's about this that kind of places that how they can be organized uh, that can be. Uh, open for the community. And uh, this school, this communitarian school, they have had an option about, uh, about layout, about the layout of the school. And the layout is uh, really connect with uh, daily life. Uh, with daily life, 
That means the the the, the school as as a kitchen, as a a, a social uh, space, uh, kind of living room. Um, there are. Uh, the organize the organization of the the, the school is uh, something like uh, home uh, and uh, with a, a layout very 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 open for the, the community everyone can arrive come uh, and share and uh, uh, and to be part of the activities uh, and the, the 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 organization of the the, the space and, and of the, the, the all the this layout is very very important uh, for uh, all the participants of the the, the, the actions. And the um, the second uh, topic about this this school it's uh, there are no uh, programs. There are no no plans. You you don't have at the, the beginning of the year of the, the uh, something like a, a plan for the year. No, there's nothing. It's a, a white uh, a white leaf about what we will do the next year. And all the activities are uh, organized by the participants. Uh, and uh, they are planned in function of the needs and in function of the, 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 the real situations in the community. And uh, um, it gives really something, uh, 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 a vision of uh, how we can be uh, educators, uh, facilitators, uh, social artists with this very, very simple question about what do you want to learn? and not uh, you have to learn what I have, pro I have planned, what I have to propose to you. And it changed all the paradigm and, and all the, the vision of the, 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 the action in that kind of places. Uh, and um, at least I would like to, just to share a, a, an idea about, now we have this situation of pandemic, uh, uh, of COVID. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, really uh, all the needs of the communities are connected with, uh, this uh, situation of the pandemic and COVID. And it's uh, really something very, very interesting to be uh, uh, the, the, the key, uh, uh, the key uh, basis of learning process at, in, in known space, in schools, in, uh, in, law, in clubs, in uh, everywhere, uh, to be part of the solutions about COVID and about the pandemic. And uh, uh, if we take uh, these needs of the communities in our organization of uh, learning actions and process, it's uh, perhaps we are uh, giving a, a contribution more, more and more important than to, uh, to take all the, the, the programs and plans that we have done during a lot of years. But it's just uh, um, to share that, uh, that uh, that vision about learning at local level, at global level, to be part of sustainable development, uh, to be part of the, the development of communities, uh, and uh, to be uh, really with the communities, uh, to be with the, their needs and their, uh, and their, their, um, their uh, possibilities of participation in, uh, in adult education uh, actions. And for me, it's uh, that's all, Francisca. What, you, what do you want so I say? <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Carlos. Um, we still don't have any question, but I think that until the end uh, of Patrick's pre presentation, we will have some. So don't leave, stay with us. Uh, and now I will give the floor to uh, Patrick. So I will present you uh, very quickly, Patrick. So Patrick Krebs is at the head of the project Theatre with No Home. It's an initiative where homeless people, socially and physically disabled people develop their own theatre performances. So uh, Patrick, I will give you the floor to, um, to explain your work uh, and, to, um, and to, to show us um, how, our, how this project is um, is uh, the center of uh, of everything. Let me see. Let me say it this way for those people um, who really need some uh, some support. 
thank you very much, Francisca. Thank you. Uh, many greetings from Bratislava, Slovakia. I hope the presentation will be somehow interesting for you and will invite you to ask questions, whatever is uh, important to know more deeper or you would like to get inspiration from our work, please, I will read the chat. And second point is because this technical reality of Zoom might have a situation that the internet might go down or up. I had to reload already two times. Today we have blizzard, we have a snow storm here. So I don't know if this is uh, breaking a little bit the connection. So if you, if I get frozen and I don't realize it, please also write into the chat that we cannot hear you and I will read it and so I can continue. Thank you very much. This is the technical part. So one more time, I'm Patrick and I will I would like to present you our organization called Theatre with No Home. It is a theatre group and I have prepared very short uh, PowerPoint presentation. So maybe Francisca, if you can, you can share it with the people. But basically the meaning why we are uh, calling our theater it's with no home it is especially because the actors and actresses are people with no home homeless people who are on the street many years uh, we have we work with people who are on the street for more than 20 or even 30 years so it is a very interesting uh, environment we work in Another actors and actresses are people with a serious physical handicap, which might be homeless people, or they are not homeless people, but they are some, somehow living on the edge of the society. Mm -hmm. Our logo, Divadlo Bezdomova, means theater with no home. And our claim we want to communicate is art for all, and all for art. So you can imagine that art, many, all kinds of arts, but especially theater, is our strongest tool to work, to learn, to interact, to inspire others, to learn from each other. So this is our environment we work in. That's the theater. So please, if we can continue to another slide. Yes, so we are a theater company which is working for more than 14 years. So we are already somehow long term working and some of our actors are in the group for more than 10 years. We have men women and we have yeah that, that's fine we can continue to a second slide yes thank you no problem so we are doing theater performances we are also having our band so we play music we organize uh workshops for different people uh, we educate others we also organize living libraries, which might be well-known technique. If no, and you are interested in, you can write it in the chat and I can speak about it a little bit more about living libraries. We are also organizing drama therapeutic uh, workshops and processes. One of them very strong is called Hero's Journey after Paul Rebillot, this is a drama therapeutic workshop for people who work with other people in crisis. 
Okay, we can continue to another slide. Mm -hmm. So, why are we doing it? Along the, I am in my private life, or not private, my, <laughs> let's say, professional life, I am a teacher. Theater work is my very big professional hobby. The NGO work is a, my hobby work. I'm a regular teacher, language teacher. I do teach Spanish, English, and Slovak to foreigners. All are adults. But also, I love to use theater and art as an educational tool, especially for those people who believe they cannot learn. Among them, for example, people with no home. So we are we are using theater because it works simply for the people who like this environment. It is very powerful. Of course, there are people who are not, let's say, born performers or they are not so much attracted by theater, of course. But for those who are attracted, it can be very nice and powerful tool to communicate own ideas. It, so we are trying to give voice to the people who are usually voiceless. Thank you, we can continue. There was a question from uh, Francisca, where, we, where can be uh, done adult education? So among other places, it is happening in our theater. In last five years or six years, we are renting an own space from the city which we renovated from a ruin. There was a ruin in bad condition and we renovated it and we created our own theatrical home. So this is where it is happening. We are, for example, we are performing or doing workshops at a museum or in the prison. Prison work is very important part of our activities. We work with ex-prisoners. Ex-prisoners might be part of homeless people. And also we enter into prisons and we perform there. And the highest level of our work in the prison is direct workshops with the prisoners. This is very nice way how to work with people with via art in a very specific environment. We also enter into psychiatric hospitals because among our actors and actresses, we have also people with psychiatric diagnosis. And again, it seems to be very powerful a uh, way to for them to express their need via theater. We also were invited into governmental office. And yes, you can imagine some performances we did also on the streets. So these are few of environments where we are active and where the education and artistic work is happening. Please, we can continue. Fine. This is uh, one of the rare pictures taken in the prison. Men in blue are prisoners who are going through a workshop we did with them for one week. It was day by day intense workshop and they were able to go out of their reality thanks to their artistic approach. Uh, I am very happy, I would be very happy if you know about any organization active in the prison via arts, if you could let me know. And please also, if there are people 
who know about other homeless theaters, I also would like to know because we are trying to create the full complete network of homeless theaters. Yeah, we can continue. Okay, this is our web page. Divadlo Bezdomova means theater with no home. If you are interested in our work, you can browse on our web. Few pages are in English and among international uh, or Erasmus projects, some of the books we were writing are available in different uh, European languages like Spanish, or Italian, German, etc. according to the project. So this is the end of the my presentation speaking about the uh, pictures and I am now curious if there are some concrete questions and I am happy to answer them. How to reinvent third places for learning during this pandemic? Okay. Mm -hmm. Dr. Patrick, we are already reading the questions at the q and a okay if you want to, to to answer so we have one first question i don't know if it's uh, specifically for you patrick but you can uh, uh, give an answer and perhaps carlos can also uh, try to 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 comment about that and the first question is about uh, the, is uh, the, the the this one how do you approach your specific public how do you recruit your actors i think that this question is for you, uh, Patrick. So, if you want to to answer to answer uh, Aurélie, uh, that um, the, that is it is the person who asked this uh, this question. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Uh, recruiting the actors and actresses for our theater is or started in the street paper. I am pretty sure in most of the big cities in European countries are street papers like Big Issue or Augustin in Austria or different in different uh, countries and there were the first actors and actresses and then among homeless people the news are spread quicker than a corona so they know, they know about this. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you, um, Patrick. I don't know if you want to add something, uh, Carlos. Yes, um, it's a very, very interesting question about uh, pandemic and uh, this uh, vision of third places and uh, some places that can be uh, a meeting point of projects and uh, uh, local actions. And uh, I think that for uh, the adaptation of these uh, third places, this uh, place for the, the, the situation of pandemic, we need to take um, uh, two concepts that are uh, really uh, um, important for this. The first one is uh, to take care, caring about uh, the others. That means uh, in, um, in communities at local level, uh, to take care, to, to, to be part of uh, solidarity, to be part of uh, how we can be a community. It's a, a first approach for that in uh, to transfer it to uh, places like, like this one, like the first places. We need to organize in the, this, um, these areas uh, the, 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 the action, the strategic action of to take care. And it's not easy. It's not easy uh, because um, generally it can be, uh, uh, the interpretation can be the, uh, the vision of assistentialist uh, vision of uh, to take care of the others, to, to take care of uh, uh, elderly people, something like that. There, there, there are a, a kind of tradition of to take care is about uh, uh, assistentialism. And we need to break that kind of vision and really to build in communities the idea of to take care as a, a, a very, very powerful dynamic for the communities to develop themselves. And um, to, 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 to organize uh, 
the, the, the actions about this, it's really a big, big challenge. And uh, uh, um, I think that we can uh, go further about this topic uh, in the future. And it's a big, big challenge. The second topic is about the commons. Commons, that means that there are a lot of uh, uh, areas in uh, social life in our territories that are uh, uh, for, that is owned by everybody and everyone. And in about pandemic, uh, we are now looking for a lot of commons that in the past we don't uh, uh, we don't understood like that. For example, the importance of uh, social uh, health services, uh, about pharmacies, about the the the. Um, all, all the activities to 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 uh, to go to home to give uh, deliver deliver at home a lot of goods a lot of uh, uh, and food etc and we need to organize the commons in at local level and uh, it's a big big challenge to to be part of the plan of the activities in the third places so uh, uh, about this to take care and commons can be two ways of uh, organizing the future of the communities, uh, starting by uh, third places uh, or places that we can build together. It's my first approach about this very, very nice and very interesting uh, equation that Isabel puts to us. Okay, thank you, Patrick. I think we have some more questions uh, in the chat. Uh, we have one here from Sari. I don't know if you can. Uh, yes, I can. can read it. Okay. So, um, what are the results and the impacts of the theater on the people who watch it and on the performers themselves? Do you have some examples? Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Uh, you can imagine that the performance itself is a short part of a longer process. So, for you can imagine that, or it is so in our case, that more or less about one year, we prepare a new performance and then we perform it. But in the meantime, we are also performing other performances. At the moment, we are performing five or six different performances along the year. So, there are performances where people return as a spectators or they see it for the first time. The impacts are sometimes or many times different. And what is the impact on the spectators? We are many times listening because always after the performance, we have live discussion with the audience people can ask directly actors and actresses they can comment they can ask questions and actors respond if they feel like do so or they have also questions to the audience so the interaction is very strong so powerful and I would like to add a little bit, one word only to what we were speaking about before, about the situation, pandemic situation and our work. What can we do? I must say that me personally, I'm quite struggling with the, with the electronic media, even though I'm very active and also our actors and actresses. So it is surprising that a lot of people with no home, if they have no home, but many times they have cell phone. And this electronic connection today via social nets or just via internet is helpful even for the homeless people that's why it is important to have free Wi-Fi in the city or close to the restaurants or in libraries. Important service for the people. Uh, we are also, we've, we recorded our performances and we started to stream it 
or live streaming, we were very afraid. We were feeling like this will kill our theater. This will be end of our contact with people. Theater is not for video. And this is all true. But how surprised we were when we had more than 100 viewers for live performance. Live per so, for, for, so somebody had to be on time on YouTube and uh, when the performance finished, no more possible uh, watching. So it is like in the theater. And when we had festival, we organized the only festival, international festival of homeless theaters, probably in the world, 14 years. It is called Error. It was two weeks ago. And we had in one day, 600 people from four continents so this was this wouldn't be ever possible if we do it only traditional way so i would like to a little bit balance between yes it is tiring and screen and, and all these electronics but it is also giving a new possibilities and i wish we again have regular theater performances but also I'm learning this way of communication and now listening us each other from Portugal, Italy, France, well, or other planets, I'm not sure. So uh, we, we are still in contact. So there is some benefit of this. It's very, uh, about, about this, uh, this detail of uh, Patrick uh, introduced about the this new potential of uh, internet and uh, the new ways of communication it's uh, at the same time for the topic that i introduced in the in the, the webinar about third places it's the same uh, the same challenge can we imagine a third place in uh, uh, organized by uh, this sharing process that in this network that you introduce about the festival of theater it's it's the same it's a uh, how we can imagine something that um, is connect uh, more connections without social uh, and uh, personal connection but at the same time it's it's a big potential it's something new about the possibilities of the future in terms of um, third places too uh, and thanks for your detail and uh, for your experience it's very very nice uh, patrick yeah thanks Thank you. If I can only add, because I see uh, people's comments and thank you for all who you, you are uh, responding. I feel like we are, have a live discussion and that's really nice. I would like to say that our festival was hybrid. Some of parts were pre-recorded. Some was live streaming. Yeah. Again, pre-recorded. So we were able to do a lot. Not everybody could travel and bring own show, yeah? And who could not, they sent us video, which normally we never would do. And now we, something alive, something was, uh, so we call it hybrid and it was working quite well. And I see here some more question about prison. Yeah. We were working in a, a high security prison not in the prison where people can go outside so uh, it is important to enter into an environment where normally nobody is entering because almost all of these people one day will go out there is there are few people who are for lifelong stay and many people most of people they one day they will go out i know there are countries with very nice care after being released from the prison slovakia is uh, doing very bad we are a country of five million people and we have more than ten thousand prisoners in the country 
and every day somebody is going out and we don't know what is he or she doing so that's why this educational and activities which are not even perceived as educational but simply uh, people where they can learn something so it is educational but they don't perceive it so they can be more ready to, to for the struggles of the world uh, so that's why uh, uh, this is my short comment to the prison work and speaking about homeless people uh, yes, homeless people are also, uh, it is interesting, if you are, some of you, you might have experience with homeless people, but among homeless people, we have all variety of people, people who are uh, having a lot of children, we have people who finished two universities, we have people who uh, returned from abroad, after 20 years and they f didn't find any home at home. Uh, there are many reasons to become a homeless. Of course, there are different kinds of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, health, health problems. Health problem is a big part of uh, homelessness. So it is, we are working in more levels, but we are trying not to offer uh, sleeping, food, or this material stuff. We are more focused on, let's say, emotional well-being. And always we give reward to our actors and actresses so they get paid. They get paid for rehearsals and performances. So it is for them work the work is not big and they must do other stuff it is not possible to live from our theater work but it can significantly help them in their own development so this is something i wanted to highlight Uh, for sure, there, if there are more questions, I can speak a lot about uh, other points. I'm not sure what is the most interesting for people. Maybe if you want, you can ask again. Okay. May I, may I introduce a, a very short topic too about this uh, last uh, approach that uh, Patrick gave to us about uh, working and uh, having some money coming from activities, it's really uh, very, very important um, in uh, social work to understand that um, we don't uh, have to give money to people uh, in terms of food or in terms of other ways, but to organize the possibilities of by their own, they work, they do something with the personal uh, uh, engagement with the, with the activity and that then they have money for what they have done, prepared by themselves, organized by themselves. There's a, a, a very important program at the European level coming from France and from Canada that for the young people, its name is Tapage. Um, it's, uh, having money at the end of the day. Uh, that means uh, uh, young people living in the streets uh, where they want to live, uh, but uh, organize, the associations at local level organizing some activities uh, for um, productive activities. So, um, and they, the young people participate only when they want and they do with money what they want to. Uh, there, there's no... Um, no information, where do you come from, where do you go? It's just about, we have something to uh, propose to you and to, to, to contribute to organize your life as you want and like you want, and to do, we, to do this with, uh, with you. And uh, 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 this 
possibility to, 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 to give opportunities to people, to young people, to homeless, to, uh, uh, to organize themselves in something that they are uh, active. They are really uh, organizing their power of acting. It's uh, really very, very important. Um, I, I, I just shared that the, the situations connect with assistentialism. That means giving no possibilities to people to have their power of acting. And uh, really, uh, uh, it's a very, very interesting uh, topic that Patrick shared with us with this idea of um, uh, money and uh, uh, individual uh, participation, that kind of way. Uh, thank you, Patrick, about this, this topic. I think it's really important uh, for, for uh, social work, and social <laughs> learning too. Thank you, Carlos, for reinforcement. This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I see here another question coming from Claudius. What is the hardest part in working and performing with homeless people? Uh, my, my answer is to work with homeless people is not hard. Really not. Very hard is to work with institutions. <laughs> That's the hard part. Uh, homeless people are very happy that they can work or they can do something. The energy there, we are not worried. There is something, uh, this is the healthy part of our work. But to explain to institutions and especially national institutions, it is many times even impossible. That's why we as a theater, as an NGO, especially first 10 years, we were basically existing just because of international projects. Nationally, <laughs> like no support or very, very small support, the opposite institutions were giving us hard time they didn't understand why somebody should work with homeless people via art why not to provide only food or health care so this is my answer to this okay thank you so much patrick um, we have uh, just three more minutes, so we are um, quite ending the, uh, this webinar. Uh, I don't know if we have still more questions, but if so, we can share them with you, uh, Patrick, if you allow us, and then you can, um, you can answer them through email if possible. Um, so I will give you just one minute, each one, each one to to close this uh, webinar and then I will um, just say goodbye to everyone. So Patrick, do you mm -hmm. Thank you for allowing me to share. I, I would like to say that without sharing and learning and inspiring from each other, our work would be never be possible to do. In Slovakia is only one homeless theater. So our colleagues in other countries are our colleagues. And again, I am asking if you know about any theater group where people are homeless people, please let, uh, let me know, let us know, and we can invite them to our festival and be in touch. I wish you that you learn from this COVID pandemic, whatever you need to learn, and it might give you something what we never would be aware without this pandemic. But of course, I wish that it will be done, finished, and we all are healthy, healthy and can continue on our way. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Do you want to just a few words to end? Yes, just to say that uh, it was uh, really uh, inspiring to be with Patrick in this uh, uh, action, this webinar and to uh, take again, again the idea and the concept of uh, teachers, uh, 
trainers, uh, all these people connect with education, educators, they must think about their uh, professional uh, approach as social artists. They need to think that education, training are uh, in most part of situations tools for development. And to be a social artist in uh, education, in training, in uh, local development, uh, local of communities, it's really something more. Uh, it's a, a big passion to, to be part of, uh, of the challenge of our times. And uh, not only to be uh, an educator, a trainer, or something like this. It's just my, my cooperation with Patrick, and it was very nice to meet you and to be with you in this meeting. Thank you. So thank you both uh, for your presence today and for your uh, great contribution. And uh, it was very inspiring um, he hearing you uh, and um, hearing about your project, uh, Patrick. It's a very interesting one. Um, thank you all to be, um, for being uh, behind your screen. Um, don't forget that uh, who wants to get a badge uh, have a task to do. Uh, it is in the Moodle platform. So if you want to, to complete uh, this task, you will get a badge. Thank you so much. Don't forget it's the last webinar of this, uh, of this course. So thank you so much uh, for following us during the, the whole uh, course. Um, and uh, I hope to, to see you one day uh, face to face, Patrick, perhaps, who knows? Um, and uh, some of participants here uh, of this webinar. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Obrigado. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> bye. It was nice bye -bye. to meet you. Bye bye. Bye bye.